Updating is a two-step process. Step one is to trigger the update process so that data for the update is queried from the database and presented back to the client in a view where it can be edited. Step two is to make and submit the changes back to the controller, which will then carry out the process to store the new information into the database and report the results back to the client. Step one was covered in a previous video. This video covers step two. An MVC architecture is being used, so the processing is split between a controller, a model, and views. The vehicle update view is where the query data is presented to the client for editing. To ensure that the view will properly indicate to the controller that the update is to be done, and to provide a key associated with a particular vehicle, two hidden inputs are placed in the update form. The first of these input fields will contain a value associated with the action to trigger the proper control structure in the controller. The second input will contain the key value that uniquely identifies the vehicle. In this instance, the value will come from one of two sources. The original source will be from the query data. The secondary source will be a variable holding the value if the form is submitted and sent back for correction if something is incorrect. In short, it is the sticky value. Next, we move to the controller, the vehicle's controller specifically. In the controller, there will be a control structure that will handle the actual data update. The case statement must match the value in the first hidden input field in the update view. The process within the control structure, the case statement, is the same as with most other processes. First, we filter and collect the data from the inputs. Second, we check for bad or missing data. Third, if errors are found, we send it back to the view for correction. Four, if no errors exist, the model-based function to do the update is called. Fifth, we determine the outcome of the update. And six, we send the results back to the client in a view. The last step involves storing the success message into the session and using a header to direct back to the vehicle's controller. That way the vehicle management view can be completely built and show the message. In the view, a PHP code block is added to see if a message exists in the session, and if so, to store it into a local variable to be displayed. A PHP code block is added to the bottom of the view to clear the message from the session once we are done with it. In the vehicle model, a new function was added to handle the update. This is similar to the add vehicle function, with the exception of passing in the unique key for the vehicle and using it in the where clause of the SQL statement. Also, changing the SQL to be an update and adding a new bind value method to bind the unique key value to a placeholder used in the SQL statement. With the code in place, an update should now be possible. First, we select a vehicle to update by finding and clicking the Modify link. The vehicle information should now be displayed in the Update view. Current values should be displayed in the Form Input fields. Looking at the source code, we should find and confirm the presence and correctness of the hidden inputs. Returning to the view, we make a change to one or more of the values and then submit the form. If the update succeeded, a success message should appear in the vehicle management view. Checking the database table, we should be able to see the new information. If you attempt to modify a vehicle but don't make any changes, then submit, a failure message should appear. This is because an update requires something to change, otherwise the update fails. As you can see, the process is relatively straightforward and doesn't require a lot of code. But to do an update is one of the key methodologies needed to manage data in a dynamic website.